Dear God is there. And today is special worship service with a divine touch in your life in Jesus' name. With me here, God is here. With you there, God is there. And when you and I connect together, there will be an explosion of miracle in your life. If you believe that, say Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we come today and we know where two or three, two thousand or three thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, millions of people, when they are gathered together in your name, we know that Christ, the mighty one, is there. And we know that you are here today, here to save, here to deliver, here to heal, here to set the oppressed free. Do it, Lord. In my brother there, in my sister there, son, daughter there, do it, Lord. Online, everywhere, in every location, do it, Lord. Manifest your presence in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. God is there. He will meet your need in Jesus' name. We come to something special today. God bless you. You can sit down. Something spectacular. Something extraordinary. That God will take you from where you are. A place of despondency. A place of despair. A place of no strength and no power. And the Lord will take you you'll get to the mountain top. I'm reading today from 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're reading from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with that, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And then in verse 2, then Jezebel said, a message unto Elijah saying, Has anybody ever sent a message to you? And they say something that terrifies you, terrorizes your life, threatens you. And then you feel, What am I going to do? That message that anybody has sent to you, any Ahab any Jezebel, any terrible man or woman, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Some years ago, I was in Ghana, in Kumasi, Ghana, we were having an evening revival, crusade. And there was a man that came in the morning, we'll do seminar, we'll do teaching. In the evening, we'll do crusade. And this man came to me in the morning, after the morning session. And he said, I have a mental problem. I said, how did it happen? He said, somebody wrote to me with red ink and told me I was going to be mad. As I read through the letter, lo and behold, I lost myself. I forgot myself. Everything went blank. And the person who wrote that letter to me, knowing that he would be mental, he came to his house, he packed all his good property and went away. And then he heard that I came from Nigeria and I came to Ghana. And he said, please help me. 
I need to recover myself, regain myself. Today, you will regain yourself. But you know, when you said pray for me, I didn't pray. I said, go back home. I've never seen him before. I said, check this, check this, check this. Take out all those things. The charms. The idol worship fetishes. Take help me with. Burn them. He didn't tag you and say, you don't know me. I'm just seeing you for the first time. How do you know I have something in the house? He said, yes, I will do. And he got back home. And he picked all those seeds, threw them away. And then he came, he came in the evening. I said, have you done what I told you to do? He said, yes. I said, let me pray for you now. He said, no need, no prayer. When I did what you told me to do, something flew out of my head. And now I am normal. I want to tell you today, you are going to become normal. Your life, your family, your profession, your body, your soul, your spirit, You'll be normal in Jesus' name. I'm reading First Corinthians, First Kings, chapter nineteen, verse two. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, "So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them." by tomorrow about this time in verse 3 and they were told then and when he saw that he arose and he went for his life and came to Beersheba which belongeth to Judah and led his servant there then in verse 4 it says but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. He came to the end of his strength, the end of his power, and the end of his courage but the lord turned everything around the lord will turn everything around in your life and then he, he came to the beginning of a new life a lease of life and today i'm inviting you that you'll come to a new beginning in your life in jesus name he wanted to die God will not answer a negative prayer. Yeah. Any prayer you have prayed, let me go. Let me die. Let me finish everything. Let whatever will happen, happen. Let the heavens fall. God will not answer your bad prayer. Yeah. He will give you something different something fresh something powerful now O oh lord take away my life for i am not better than my fathers look at verse five and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree behold then an angel touched him an angel touched him. I didn't hear your amen. Yeah. And said unto him, Arise and eat. And then in verse 6, And he looked, and behold, There was a cake baking on the coals. 
an angel cooks for him an angel will cook for you heaven sent food there's a restaurant in heaven and it is meant only for the favorites of god and when a favorite of god is hungry is thirsty is discouraged is downtrodden and he feels the food on earth is not giving him strength the food of heaven will be sent unto you and he did eat and drink and he laid him down again look at verse 7 in verse 7 and the angel of the lord came again the second time you didn't say amen to that one yeah. uh, you know some people are here in the morning service and they say this is so good i eat i drink i have power i have strength and now i can run and i said five o'clock this evening come back oh he says pastor thank you very much i got something now elijah ate the first time you are eating the first time now and today five o'clock before we start the prayers you are running you are running and you are here and i'm going to run you know at 80 i will run faster than you run i will be here i said i will be here and all those online there's a special thing i want to bring to you tonight as you are here now i want you to come in the evening the power you have never seen in your life and that authority you never saw in your life the power that authority will come upon you in jesus name the second time the second time and he touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee you are beginning a new journey after this divine touch with total freedom from the end of this total touch crusade a new journey will begin in your life and all the power you need and all the strength you need to be able to run the race that is set before you will be given unto you you will climb mountains you will overcome enemies and every power of evil in your life disturbing you putting a hurdle before you and saying we will we'll kill you we will we'll destroy you that dream will not be fulfilled the lord will make your enemies liars in jesus name look at verse 8 in verse 8 we are told and he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto the mount of God you will mount up and you will get to that mountain in Jesus name power for your hour through the divine touch that's the topic today power for your hour through the divine touch power for your hour you have power you know elijah he came to the hour of persecution and in your hour of persecution the lord will give you the power for your hour he came to the hour of perplexity he was perplexed what am i going to do in the hour of your perplexity god will give you power for your hour it was an hour of peril 
danger. Jezebel sent to him and said, If I am queen and I am still here, by tomorrow I'll finish you up. That's how they brag. They think they have power, but God will protect and preserve you from them all in Jesus' name. The hour of peril, the hour of persecution, the hour of perplexity, the Lord will protect you. We know Elijah as a prophet of power, but at this time, he came to the hour of powerlessness. No power, no strength. He couldn't stand. He was shivering. He had not even seen Jezebel. He only heard the message of Jezebel and he became powerless. It was the hour of his powerlessness. And in the hour of your powerlessness, the Lord will wake you up. Resurrection power will come into your life in Jesus' name. Elijah felt lonely. You know, he wasn't married. He didn't have any children. He didn't have any friends. He didn't have a dependable servant. He didn't have anybody to encourage him. It was the hour of loneliness. And there are people that feel so lonely and in the hour of loneliness, they take a decision that will ruin their lives. And I want to tell you today, as the Almighty God said to Elijah, in the hour of loneliness, in your hour of loneliness, the Lord will send help to you. It was the hour of lawlessness in the land. Everybody did whatever they wanted. And if Jezebel wanted to empower Ahab to take Naboth's vineyard, that's it. Lawlessness. There was no rule. There was no law in the land. And Elijah said, what am I going to do? The whole place is lawless in the hour of lawlessness, lawlessness in your community. As you pass, evil people will not see you. Yeah. Evil hands will not touch you. Yeah. There is power for your hour, the hour of lawlessness. The Lord will be with you. Yeah. It was for him the hour of lukewarmness. Look at Elijah, the prophet of fire, fervent, fiery, and zealous. He's not lukewarm. Everything has gone down. No fire, no faith, no excitement, no courage. You know, sometimes in your life, you can come to a point when you're lukewarm, Let's crusade, let's go. I've gone before. I was there in April. I was there in June. I don't know what I'm going to do again. Won't you come? I don't know. Let's go to church. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But now you are cold and you're lukewarm. In the hour of your lukewarmness, the Lord will visit you. The fire will burn again. And great things will happen in your life in Jesus' name. You know, Elijah did not know there was any other believer in the land. He said, I am the only one. And they seek my life to destroy there was no love shown unto him in the hour of lovelessness around you. Nobody loves me. What am I doing here? Why am I going to church? They never see me. They never visit me. 
the Lord will visit you. But you know, God told Elijah, I have 7,000 men who have not bowed down to Baal. Yes, Lord, but I can't see any of the 7,000 people. And I am living alone. There's no love. Nobody is visiting me. Look up here. I came now to visit you. And I didn't come empty-handed. The Lord sent me that all your tears will be wiped away. That all your complaints, everything will go away in Jesus' name. My brother online, my sister there online, look at me here. I am for you. All the gifts I have, they are for you. All the grace I have, they are for you. All the time I have uh, is for you. Did you hear the uh, brother who testified from uh, Texas yesterday? Actually, he lives in Plano. And far away from here in America. And uh, two of the children went to school. And they tested them at school. Lo and behold, they were COVID-19 positive. They came home and the father and the mother and all the other children caught it. And they all became positive and they were feeling already that this thing had caught them. But he happens to have my phone number. And then he sent a text to me. He said, my father, two of my children, COVID-19 positive, and then myself, my, my wife, and the other two children, six people in the family. When I got that text, I prayed. And then I sent back text to him, and I said, I have prayed everything is all right and the whole family went for checkup the following day and the medical people in america confirmed everybody is all right and i come to you you say i'm lonely the hour of your lovelessness nobody around showing love i am always there for you yeah. tell your state of us here tell your national of us here and tell whoever is your leader or maybe you now have us online and you can then send an sos message the love of god the power of god will touch you at your point of need in jesus name yeah. elijah came to a point the hour of discouragement discouraged i don't want to preach anymore i don't want to run the race anymore i've done all i can do all i want to do now is lie down here and die in your hour of discouragement the lord will touch your life yeah. and that's why we're here that's why we're here this week that all the discouragement you have got the divine touch for total freedom will come upon your life all that discouragement will vanish away in jesus name yeah. It was the hour of disappointment. I'm so disappointed. I've done my best. And there had not been rain all these three and a half years. And then I brought down the rain by prayer. And instead of saying, thank you, pastor. Thank you, prophet. We appreciate you. All the praying and the fasting we appreciate no appreciation he was so disappointed in your hour of disappointment the lord will touch your life 
it was the hour of fear because Ahab and Jezebel decided they were going to fight and finish him the hour of fighting but then power for your hour no matter what is fighting against you and no matter what you fear in this hour of the fury of the world the power for your hour will come upon your life in jesus name that's why we're looking at the topic power for your hour through the divine touch the three points we're looking at three points in the message number one the unnecessary fear and discouragement of a dynamic reformer that's elijah a dynamic reformer the unnecessary fear and discouragement of a dynamic reformer every fear in your life this hour is cancelled in jesus name number two the uncommon food and drink from the divine restorer he restoreth my soul it will restore your soul it will restore your spirit if it will restore the virtue and the vigor of your life in jesus name the uncommon food and drink from the divine restorer number three the unsurpassable future and destiny after a defining renewal the lord renewed him renewed his spirit renewed his vision renewed his focus and renewed his inner man and that renewal became the defining element of his future what you are getting during this crusade will renew your life and the renewal you have will become a defining thing in your life in jesus name you have a future starting from today and you have a destiny at the end of that future glorious things are going to happen through your life in jesus name i'm talking to you somebody there in particular that whatever good thing you have had in the past something greater something higher something brighter something new will come in your life in jesus name unsurpassable future and destiny for a defining after a defining renewal let's come to number one number one is the unnecessary fear and discouragement of a dynamic reformer already we have read from first kings chapter 19 verses 1 to 4 a threat came and he felt my life is being torn apart he didn't remember any promise he didn't remember how to pray he didn't remember the god of heaven he didn't remember all that the lord has done all those testimonies the lord has done through him he was down and he had fear unnecessary fear he had discouragement unnecessary discouragement 
your fear is unnecessary your discouragement is unnecessary amen the lord will bring you out of it look at isaiah chapter 51 and i'm reading from verse 7 isaiah chapter 51 verse 7 hearken unto me ye that know righteousness the people in whose heart is my law fear ye not the reproach of men fear ye not the reproach of men neither be ye afraid of their revilings look at verse 12 i even i i am he that comforteth you who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die why are you afraid of a man of a woman that shall die and the son of man which shall be made as grass and then in verse 13 and forgettest the Lord thy maker. Anytime you become unnecessarily afraid, you forget your maker, you will not forget. You forget your Savior, you will not forget. You forget your Bible, you will not forget. You forget his promises, you will not forget you forget the mighty power of the lord who says is there anything too hard for me you will not forget you forget the testimonies you have heard no matter what kind of problem you have today others have had that kind of problem and the lord has solved the problem for them you will be the next to testify and forgettest the Lord that maker that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually. You are fearing continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor. As if you were ready to destroy. As if is able as if he has the power as if he has the final say in your life nobody has the final say in your life yeah. only god has the final say yeah. christ your savior has the final say yeah. ahab will not have the final say in my life Jezebel will not have the final say in my life. Herod will not have the final say in my life. The terrible man in the community will not have the final say in my life. You can hear me, I cannot hear you. Why then are you continually afraid every day because of the fury of the oppressor? As if you were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Check up their history. From Pharaoh to all those people in Canaan and to Goliath and to Nebuchadnezzar and to Herod, check up their history the oppressors of days gone by where are they today they are gone jesus is still alive yeah. look at isaiah chapter 43 in isaiah chapter 43 what are you doing from verse 1 open your bible isaiah chapter 43 Verse 1, but now thus says the Lord that created thee, and he that formed thee, fear not. <coughs> 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 
Say sorry, sir. Sorry, Praise the Lord. Sorry, you must understand, father and children were in the family. And when the father does, <coughs> the children will say, sorry, daddy. Now, it says, for I have redeemed thee and have called thee by thy name and thou art mine you belong to god i said you belong to god look at verse 2 there it says when thou passest through the waters i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whatever the fire, whatever the fury of the enemy, you will walk through. Yeah. You will come to the other side. Yeah. The hand of the Lord will touch you. The power of the Lord will touch you. And you remain stable and steadfast all through your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. When thou walkest through the fire, Thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 7, in verse 7, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him look at verse 18 there in verse 18 remember ye not the former things now that consider the things of old verse 19 behold i will do a new thing now it shall spring forth and shall ye not know it i will even make a way for you in the wilderness and rivers in the desert yeah. verse 21 in verse 21 these people have i formed for myself you are not for satan you are not for sickness you are not for failure you are not for oppressors. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. What is he there? They shall show forth my praise. What is she? They shall show forth my praise. The glory of God will abide upon you as the Lord touches you at your hour of unnecessary fear your hour of discouragement in jesus name look at number two here point number two the uncommon food and drink from the divine restorer the lord is your shepherd you will not want he'll make you to lie down in green pastures it will restore your soul did you hear the choir the other time i'm taking it back everything that has been stolen away from you as the restorer comes in your life take it back in jesus name the uncommon food and drink from the divine restorer we've read that already that the angel came from heaven and touched him and then prepared food and drink for him and said rise up eat and drink and he rose up and he ate and he drank the second time the angel came again until you eat enough the Lord will keep on sending to you. Yeah. Until you drink enough, the Lord will keep on sending unto you. Yeah. And then as he ate, he rose up and he went in the power, in the strength of that meal, of that food. 
the power you get during this divine touch for total freedom will go through life with you. Look at Psalm 78, reading from verse 24. It says, And I drink down manna upon them to eat, and had given them the corn of heaven. Elijah had that food that came through the angel. And it is the food, the corn of heaven. Look at verse 25. Man did eat angel's food. It happened in the wilderness. It happened to Elijah as an individual. He sent them meat to the food. What's the food today that he gives us? That's Matthew chapter 4. Reading from verse 4. Matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 4 but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God the word of God is the food for your spirit and for your soul actually it was the spirit and the soul the mind of elijah that was discouraged the hand is not fearful in the heart the legs feet are not fearful in the heart the eyeballs are not fearful in the heart the nose the throat is not fearful. The flesh is not fearful. It's the heart. And anytime you are afraid, it's not your body. It's your heart. It's your spirit. It's your soul. And once your soul is down, then the hands are weak. And the feet are weak. And the head, the brain will even lose memory. But now, the food of the soul and the food of the spirit you live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god job chapter 23 we're reading from verse 12 job 23 verse 12 neither have i gone back from the commandment of his leaves i have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food anytime you're hungry internally spiritually go back to the word anytime you're discouraged go back to the word every anytime you're tired as if i cannot move on again take the food the uncommon food that the divine restorer comes to give you and the drink look at john chapter 4 reading from verse 10. in verse 10 you see jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of god and who it is that says to thee give me to drink that would have give, have, have asked of him, and he would give thee the living waters, the water of life. And when you drink that water of the Spirit of God, life will come back. Restoration will come. Renewal will come. Regeneration will come. Resurrection will come to your life in Jesus' name. It's coming today. You will eat. I will eat. I will eat. I will drink. And life, new life, will come back in Jesus' name. John chapter 7, reading from verse 37.
John 7, 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come and drink. You all drink. Verse 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow, tell me, rivers of living water. Verse 39, but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus Christ, Jesus was not yet glorified, but now is glorified, and that bread of life is yours today. Amen. That water of life is yours today. Amen. Discouragement will vanish away. Amen. Fear will vanish away. Amen. New life, new energy will come to your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now. The unsurpassable future and destiny after a defining renewal. I pray that nobody will miss renewal during this divine touch crusade in Jesus' name. This morning, the hand of the Lord will touch you. The spirit of the Lord will touch you and revival must come to you renewal must come to you and then a new future look up here look up here the lord is writing a new dream a new ideal a new vision a new duty a new responsibility is writing for you right now. Your future is going to be much, much different from your past. As he did for Elijah, it's going to do for you. All those high mountains, your thought you could not climb, this morning new power will come. You will not just climb the mountain, you will run up the mountain. Yeah. All those heights you thought you could not jump, you will jump so far ahead of those hurdles, and then when you land, you start running. Yeah. And they say, Who is that? What's your name? They say, who is that running? I said, sister there, what's your name? Brother there, what's your name? They say, it's pastor so and so, it's brother so and so, who didn't know how to run before, but after today, you will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not fail. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And then it says, they will come and they will run. They will fly over mountains and over valleys. And when they walk, they will not be weary. And when they run, they will not fade in Jesus' name. <laughs> Tiredness is gone. Weariness is gone. Discouragement is gone. This race that the Lord has set before you, nobody will take the baton off your hand. Nobody will say, you're sl sluggish. You cannot make it. Come out of the way. They will run their own race. You will run your own race. Now, let's come back to... Elijah. You know Elijah? When he said, it's over. 
It's not over yet for you. And it's not over yet for me. Say that for yourself now. So the Lord, look at First Kings chapter 19, verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Go. He thought he was lying down there. The end has come. The Lord said, Rise up, go. Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Azael to be king over Syria. He says, You will carry one vote. And the one vote you carry will make Azael to become king. Whatever others say, and whatever they do with their votes, you will be the deciding factor over the nation of Syria. Yeah. That was still in the future, and Elijah did not know. You don't know what's in your future. Never say you will die. You will not die. Never say the end has come. Only the beginning has come in your life. Look at verse 16. And Jehu the son of Nibshai, shall thou anoint king over Israel? Elijah that thought that the end had come, the Lord said over Syria, you will appoint the one that will rule. Over Israel, you will appoint the one that will rule. And Elisha, the son of Shephat of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. You are still going to raise up a prophet exactly like you, having the power and the spirit of God upon his life. You still have a walk from today to your future. Yeah. And then look at verse chapter 21, verse 17. Chapter 21, verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Look at verse 18. Arise, go down. And meet Ahab, the king of Israel. You remember? Elijah was running away from Ahab and Jezebel. I don't want to see them. They will kill me. And yet, there is no other prophet that God has that will take heaven's message unto Ahab but Elijah who was running away. When you are running away from, God has given you a ministry there. The house fellowship, the district, the region, the state, the nation, when you are packing your load, they will tell me to come back. I cannot move on anymore. I cannot do anything anymore. I'm going to write to them at the headquarters. If you love me and you don't want me to waste here, you don't want me to die here, take me away from there. God will send you back there with a message. And then it says, Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. And they were told in the next verse, And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, As thou killed also, taking possession, thou, was, thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, in the place where the dogs leak, the blood of Naboth, shall dogs leak thy blood, even thine. What a message. A message of judgment that Elijah was still to give to Ahab. Look at verse, uh, the next verse there. It tells us in verse 20. And he have said unto Elijah, 
Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Go down to verse 23. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, Look at Jezebel, who threatened a killing by this time tomorrow. And Elijah had a message from God for that Jezebel. The people you are running away from, the Lord has a message for them through you that's why i will not run away from anybody you love me you don't love me too much only a little i will still come to you i have a message of hope for you a message of healing for you a message of deliverance for you and so if you are a man of God, a woman of God, and God is going to send you unto them with the healing power, with the deliverance power, you will not be running away. How can the doctor run away from the patient and then still treat that patient? We are together. I said we are together. And Elijah was to tell Jezebel, the dog shall eat Jezebel by the word, by the wall of Jezreel. Look at verse 24. Him that dies of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. Verse 25. Look at this. Look at this. And there was none like Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife's church of. Verse 26. And he did very abominably in the in following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel verse 27 and it came to pass when Ahab when Ahab when Ahab heard those words from Elijah instead of saying take him arrest him kill him that he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. The message caught him. The message pinched him. The message pierced him. And if Ahab could hear and then fast and pray, and go softly and he didn't say that's why i said you're my enemy you sent me again i will kill you the power to kill all that is gone yeah. nobody will kill you yeah. no charm will kill you yeah. no enemy will kill you yeah. no ahab will kill you yeah. your blood is poison to the killer yeah. and now what happened to Elijah did he die I said did he die don't ever pray that prayer again let me die let me die no something higher something greater is waiting for you yeah. look at second Kings chapter 2 Second Kings chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 11. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11, and it came to pass 
as they still went on and talked. Elijah talking to Elisha, preparing him to empower him for the continuation of Elijah's ministry in Elisha. They talked, he was at ease. He knew now he was not going to die. He was going to take part in the rapture. They went still and talked, but behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. An angel had come to give him food. He ate. And now something higher. Heavenly aeroplane, heavenly chariot came out of heaven. And then it says, parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up. And Elijah went up. And Elijah went on. Look at the future he would have missed if he had died. There are some people when there's discouragement and there is fear and there is problem and it overwhelms them. Instead, they don't even pray like Elijah, Lord, kill me. They kill themselves and they cut short their lives and they miss a great magnificent future your future you will not miss in Jesus name <laughs> and Elijah went up by a wild wind where 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 are you going where will you end up Will you go down or go up? No. I said, are you down or you are going up? No. There is somebody up in heaven. He loves you. There's somebody up in heaven is thinking about you. There's somebody up in heaven in the time of your discouragement, in the time of your fear, in the time of your frustration. There is somebody up in heaven is looking at you where you are, is stretching forth his hand, is touching you, is pulling you up, and is taking you to heaven. I said it's taking you to heaven. It will wipe away your tears. It will take your discouragement away. It will take your sicknesses away. And everything that made you to say, nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. There is no future. That Savior, that Redeemer in heaven is looking at you now. He's touching you right now. Where are you? Where are you? He's touching you right now. Where are you? And he's lifting you up out of the valley, out of the dungeon, out of the powers of darkness, out of your discouragement, out of your sickness, out of your infirmity. And he's raising you up. He's lifting you up, number one, into your salvation, into restoration, into your healing, into your deliverance. And then on that final day when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It will take you to heaven. It will take you to heaven. He will take you to heaven. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Your time has come. Your time has come. No discouragement. No disappointment. And there is no dropping, and there's no being downtrodden, and there is nothing that will keep you down. The Lord Jesus is your Lord, is your Savior, is your Restorer, is your Redeemer. He's taking you up. And then eventually on that final day, on that final day, on that final day, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they that hear shall wake up, shall rise up, and then we which are alive, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You'll be there. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth And tell the Lord, I will be there The end does not come yet Discouragement will vanish away 
disappointment will vanish away. Despondency will vanish away. The fury of the enemy, the fear of the enemy, everything will vanish away. Tell the Lord, if you are backsliding and you are lukewarm and you are complaining, nobody loves me, nobody says where I am, the Lord is seeing you there. Tell the Lord, I come back home. I come back to my Savior. I come back to my Lord. I come back to my Redeemer. I leave the wilderness of discouragement. I leave the, the, the wilderness of disappointment. I leave that stage of lukewarmness. I come, I come, I come, I come to the Lord. If you're giving up, you're giving up the race, you're giving up the journey, you're giving up your assignment, you're giving up on your Christian life, come back come back let there be a restoration a revival a renewal today when i remember when i remember what god has done for me i will never go back anymore I will never be lukewarm anymore. I'll never fear anymore. When I remember what the Lord has done, I'll never go back into discouragement anymore. Lie. Revive lie. Lie. A new life, life, an excited life, life, a revived, renewed life, life. That's what comes when you come back and you say, Lord, here am I. And I'm not going to lie down there in despondency, saying, what can I do now? My mind is weak. My spirit is dried up. My courage is gone. Take the food of the promise of God. Take the water of life coming from the heart of Christ unto you. Drink drink of the spirit eat of the word that comes out of christ new life has come new strength has come as you eat as you drink as you pray and you receive new life from the lord Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Show your gratitude unto the Lord. I am returned. I am revived. I am restored. Then look up a new vision, a new journey, a new responsibility, a new obedience, a new service, future, with courage, future, 
with conviction, future, with determination, future, with diligence. Renew your service to the Lord. Renew your commitment to the Lord. Renew your consecration to the Lord. And get ready for the coming of the Lord. Any moment from now, the rapture will take place. And that same destiny of Elijah that he went to heaven without seeing death that the future is waiting for you why are you always talking about death when the rapture may be your portion when the saints go marching in you'll be a partaker make sure you are saved make sure you are restored make sure that that new life new strength revival renewal has come in and now you go you walk you run for the new energy of the spirit You have overcome. Ahab, Jezebel, their threats, their fury, their ferocity. You have overcome. Go in this your strength and be the man the woman god has called you to be In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Victorious people of God, conquering people of God, bold, fearless people of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saved, healed, delivered, sanctified, spirit-filled, energized, empowered, baptized children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Power has come. Restoration has come. Renewal has come. Resurrection has come. What are you? Father, 
in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, the time, the hour of perplexity is over. And the hour of powerlessness is over in Jesus' name. The hour of discouragement, of despair, of disappointment, all that hour is gone from every life in Jesus' name. The hour of hopelessness helplessness all that hour is gone in jesus name we have taken the bread of life the manna from heaven we have drunk the water of life the water flowing from the river side of the lord were restored were revived, were renewed, were regenerated, and the righteousness of Christ lives now in our heart in Jesus' name. All that past of crying without stopping, all that is gone. No more cry, no more complaint, no more confusion. Now we have a future. My brother, my sister, my boy, my girl there, now you have a future. The journey ahead of you is a great journey. It's a shining journey. Yeah. It's a blessed journey. Yeah. You will run, you will not be weary. Yeah. You will walk, you will not faint. Yeah. The might of the Lord go with you. Yeah. The power of the Lord go with you. Yeah. As you go, the Spirit of God will go before you. The great conqueror, mighty Jesus, will go before you. And the angels of God will go before you and clear the way before you. No mountain will stop you. No Ahab will stop you. No Jezebel will stop you. No enemy will stop you. Better things await you on Canaan land. That better promise, that better possession, that better power be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. And the Spirit of the Lord will be the energizing pilot of your plane moving on in jesus name you go now in that strength in that power in that joy in that resurrection virtue and you will do what you have never done the grace of God and the love of God and the spirit of God and the touch of God abide upon your life from now and forever in Jesus' name.